Jai Masi, Namaste, and good afternoon. Thank you so much for inviting me and my lovely daughter, Jenny, in this important conference. We have been here for near about, I think, more than three weeks. As a person affected by leprosy, it is my real joy and pleasure to be here with you and share my insights to you. During my visit this time and last year, I visited different places throughout Australia. And I was so pleased, I was so delighted to see that you have been, your people have been working so hard to bring the smiles in the faces of people affected by leprosy, to regain the lost dignity of people affected by leprosy, and to prevent people affected by leprosy from the disability. Thank you so much for your support, help, prayer, and encouragement to the people affected by leprosy in Nepal and in many other countries. I know that many of you have heard my personal testimony. So for me, this time, quite difficult from where to start, what to say, right? But I will try my level best to summarize my personal testimony. I'm not going to say all my personal testimony because I think many of you have heard that. I will also be sharing my personal testimony a bit. At the same time, I will also, the most important thing, how I came to faith and accepted Jesus as my Lord and Savior. I will be sharing with you about this. And I will also be speaking with you about Association for Idea Nepal. What is that organization and something more about that. And of course, I will also be speaking, sharing with you the services of Leprosy Mission Nepal. As many of you know that, I was born in a remote village of Nepal, in a very, very poor family. My parents were illiterate. And at the, time, at the age of 10, when I was 10 years old, some visible symptoms were seen. No hospital in the village. I was brought to the city hospital, crossing many hospitals in the middle, one after another, one after another. Finally, I was brought to the Leprosy Mission Hospital in Anandaban Hospital in 1989 at the age of 12. It was a very difficult job for my, for my parents to bring me to the Leprosy Mission Hospital because they were illiterate and I was born in a very remote part. And they had not even been uh, once in the city. So with great difficulty, I was brought there and I was uh, diagnosed with leprosy at the age of 12. When I, uh, and at that time, I was admitted in the hospital. For the first time, I was admitted in hospital three months. My parents left me in the hospital and went back to home. And uh, after three months, I was also discharged from the hospital and went back to home. And I struggled a lot. Before, people didn't know that I suffered from leprosy. But later, when I went back to my village, all the villagers, community, community members, my family members, everyone, they knew that I suffered from leprosy. My teachers, my friends, everyone in the village, they knew that I suffered from leprosy. Then their behavior changed. My school friends, peers, they did not want to come close to me. My teachers, I still remember what they used to say, Amor, stay at home, we come to your home and guide you there. No worries about the exam, you will pass in the exam. They used to say me like that. As a child, I, was, I used to think I was so fortunate. 
that time because I need not go to school. But later on, when I grew up, I understood that it was what we call stigma, it was what we call discrimination and isolation. So it was very difficult time for me. I couldn't live in the village and I was suffering mentally, socially and physically also. The staff in the leprosy mission, Anandaban Hospital, they knew my problem very well. They knew that I was suffering from ENL reaction. ENL reaction means it, is, it was too much painful when I took the medicine of leprosy. My body reacted and it was so much, too much painful. It was just like cutting my flesh with a blade. And during the uh, time of my treatment, like I started treatment in 1989, continued my treatment till 1995. Those six years became like 60 years for me because of the extreme pain. And uh, one day Dr. Wim in Anandaban Hospital, he called me to his office and asked me a question. Asked me, Amar, will you be happy if we offer you to stay, to live in Kathmandu and continue your education? I was so happy and I said yes. So. Immediately after that, Dr. Wim wrote a letter. With that letter, I went to the orphanage and I just lived there, continued my education. There I found less stigma. Later, at the time of 20, at the age of 20, my father informed me that, Amar, it is time for you to get married. It was early marriage system that time. So he was quite clever, he found a girl from not from the same community, same village, from a very far distant village. I also went, we got married, but marriage did not succeed. I was forced to sign in the divorce paper, the reason only was leprosy. Like that, so many struggles that I suffered in my life. Physical, mental, as already I said. So the most important thing, I would like to share with you how I came to faith. You might have heard about the devastating earthquake that hit Nepal, died more than 10,000 people. Just after the devastating earthquake, I was also invited in one meeting organized by the leprosy mission. I was invited there in the capacity of the president of IDEA Nepal. I was the president of IDEA Nepal and I was invited to represent the voice of people affected by leprosy. And I did not think, there was not any, anything about uh, in my mind that I would believe Jesus. I would accept Lord Jesus as my Lord and Savior. I was simply there to attend the meeting and speak on behalf of people affected by leprosy. At that time, it was in 2015, Mr. Selden, my brother, he was the uh, uh, key speaker. Since Leprosy Mission is a faith-based organization, all the prayers, workshop are led by the devotional session and prayer. So that day, Selden was leading the session and I was in the front desk, front chair. And he was sharing the love of Jesus to the people affected by leprosy. From Mark chapter 1, verse 40 to 45. He was speaking in such a way. I listen, listen and listen. He was speaking in such a way that impressed me a lot, that touched my heart. And in the, main, in the meantime, I wanted to raise my hand up and say, yes, right now, I want to accept Jesus as my Lord and Savior. Again, I thought that it was not the suitable time. It was not the church service. So it was very difficult to control myself. I put my hand down. As soon as Mr. my dear brother Sheldon, he finished his sharing, I did not have enough courage that time to go near Sheldon and talk with him because we did not know each other. That was the very first day that we knew each other. Yes? yes. And I went and I went near next to my 
friend, gentleman who was sitting next to me, and I shared with him what I felt. And I knew that the gentleman was a Christian, but I did not know that he himself was a pastor. Dear brothers and sisters, see how God works in our life. God guided me to go to the pastor and share what I felt inside me. There were not only Christian people, non-Christian people were also there. But God led me to go to the pastor and share what I felt with him. While I, when I shared with him, he was so happy that he, he told me that, Amar, I'm so happy with today. You know, I have been praying for you since years and years. Since many years. But I have got my answer today. I have got my answer now. Praise the Lord. Thanks, Lord. He was so happy. And he took the opportunity at that time and invited me to his church. The next Saturday, I went to his church because in Nepal we have congregation church service on Saturday because Saturday is our public holiday. So I went to the church, to his church, and immediately at that time I accepted Jesus as my Lord and Savior. He also offered me leadership trainings. He also baptized me. Since then, life has been quite different. I have found lots of changes in my life. I have been living more for others than for myself. The Lord has been kind enough to keep my family going well so that I can manage better time to share joys and sorrows with others who share a history of stigma like me. I have traveled to almost all the nooks and crannies of my country and also to many parts of the world. The people I have met during those travels, especially those affected by leprosy, have made me realize that compassion, compassion is the biggest binding cord in the world and the surest remedy to any ailment on earth. Medicine might cure the blood on the skin, only love and compassion can heal our hearts. And hearts, everyone on earth, understand the language of love and compassion. Now I am the principal of my school. There are 400 students, 25 staff. And I am also in the board of Leprosy Mission International. I am also in the advisory panel of people affected by leprosy in ILAP. I am also in the board of National uh, Association of the Private Schools. Dear brothers and sisters, I never thought a person like me, one who rejected from the community, one who, who was isolated from the community, would be the principal of a school in Kathmandu. It was not an easy job to establish a school, very difficult, and I never thought a person like me would be nominated in the board of the Leprosy Mission International. And I never thought that a person like me would travel internationally so much. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Today, those villagers, friends, teachers who, who rejected me, they respect me so well. They, they invite me for their feasts and festivals. If they have any birthday, birthday parties or anything else, they invite me. No discrimination. I suffered a lot in my life. And what I think, people affected by leprosy, my dear brothers and sisters, today should not suffer like me. That's why I joined in IDEA. IDEA is an organization of people affected by leprosy. Regarding the services, I works of leprosy mission, Yesterday, Dr. Colon or the team who recently visited Nepal, they shared a lot about the work of leprosy services in Nepal. Leprosy Mission has done a lot, tremendous work in the field of leprosy. For example, you can see me. 
I am here because of the service and support of Leprosy Mission. And Leprosy Mission is able to support because of you all people, because of your support. So again, I would like to thank you for your support, prayer, and encouragement. Now I would like to share you about IDEA Nepal. IDEA, we say IDEA, but uh, its full form is Integration, Dignity, and Economic Advancement for the people affected by leprosy that is self-understood. It was established in 1998, but internationally it was established in 1994 and it started from Brazil. But in Nepal it was established in 1998. We officially registered in Pokhara, Kaski. Our major objective of IDEA Nepal is advocacy to raise the awareness and in advocacy field, raising the voices against the social stigma economical and legal discrimination against people affected by leprosy. I am ashamed to say, share you that still in Nepal we have a discriminatory law. For example, I am a person affected by leprosy. If uh, my wife can go, can give me divorce. So we have been raising our voice to abolish this discriminatory law. Leprosy mission and idea Nepal jointly we are working we are raising our voice and hopefully within a year the law the, the law will be abolished you can see nepal's map nepal has gone into federal system and now we have seven provinces idea nepal partners these are the uh, names that we closely work with other like-minded organization, but mainly we work in the close coordination with the Leprosy Mission Nepal. Our current project, Developing Leprosy Advocates in the seven provinces of Nepal, we have already formed the seven provinces, conducted the seven uh, provincial assemblies in all the seven provinces, and we have already uh, formed the committees in those committees also. Because if there are committees, now Nepal has gone into the federal system, and we, uh, if our organization is there in the local, locally also, they can go and tap the like, local resources from the local government also. Major achievements in the past, we did many advocacy and loving workshops we conducted. And we also conducted curriculum development center. Curriculum, uh, we love it, workshop with the curriculum development workshop. Our main aim was there should be the positive story of leprosy in the school curriculum. If children, they know or they are aware of the positive aspects of leprosy, then they will convey their positive message to their friends and they will convey their message to their parents. Likewise, the messages will be spread very soon. So it will help to bring awareness. We also celebrate All Leprosy Day and International Respect and Dignity Day. On March 11, every March 11, that is a very special day for us. That is the day that we have regained our last dignity. We consider that day as, as the celebration. So on March 11, we conduct very special programs and many leprosy affected people, media persons, politi politicals, they will be invited. We also bring the community awareness activities in highly endemic areas to reduce stigma and discrimination. We also broadcast leprosy related stories through radios and television also. Some of the activities that we conducted. We also conducted national level poetry competition also. We invited uh, the poets from throughout the nation to send the poetries for our poetries 
And we selected, we got 100 uh, poetry. And out of 100, we selected 20. And out of 20, we selected three. And uh, we conducted a, a competition and we awarded them. Our main aim was to reduce the stigma and discrimination. Meeting with the government bodies, capacity building trainings to IDEA Nepal members, training on psychosocial care and peer counseling to IDEA Nepal. This is very important peer counseling. Sometimes, whenever I have time, I go to the leprosy mission and I meet people affected by leprosy. They are so depressed. And I also see the people affected by leprosy that they have gone like me. They, they have suffered from the reaction and they are too much depressed. So I, when I start saying about sharing with them about my personal testimony, I was also like you long ago and I got medicine, I was cured completely and see, now you can see me. So if I speak like that, that helped them a lot. Then they were so happy and after finishing my talk, I, I could see the smiles in their faces. And uh, during the time of earthquake and uh, other emergency period, we also provided relief. Our future plans, proposal development for new projects, coordination and collaboration with different NGOs and government officers to provide the service to the needed. Develop new projects focusing on livelihood support and income generation for people affected by leprosy and capacity building and empowerment training to province level assembly of people affected by leprosy, meetings and workshops with government bodies to reform the discriminatory law which is still there. Building IDEA Nepal as leprosy data hub. You can see the pictures. Province level assembly of people affected by leprosy. This was uh, in Nepal, we have seven provinces. And while conducting the assembly in province number two, this photo was taken. You can see the pictures. Almost all the persons are affected by leprosy. <coughs> province level assembly, it was uh, held in province number three. You can see the smiling faces of people affected by the leprosy. Association for Idea Nepal, provincial assembly, province number three. And you can also see Sobhagar Kadel, country director of the leprosy mission Nepal. Kansi is also there. I think many of you know Kansi. Peace Rally Procession and 20th International Respect and Dignity Day. So, we celebrate this day in a unique way. Uh, we, uh, people affected by leprosy, school children, health workers, media persons, we invite all, the, all of them and we conduct peace rally procession. We hold the banners, play cards, and we walk in on the street to give the message to the general public. And after the rally, the program was conducted into the formal program. And we invite minister, many times we invited health minister, deputy minister, uh, to, as, as the chief guest, if such kind of high level, Persons, they come and observe our program, then media covers the news and which will ultimately help to reduce the stigma. You can see the photographs of celebrating International Respect and Dignity Day. That one, 21st International Respect and Dignity Day. And at the same time, uh, I have written a book named uh, The Sunlit Mountain. My book was launched and uh, just uh, write to me, the Deputy Prime Minister of Nepal. Picture of the peer counseling support. It was held in the leprosy mission, Anandavan Hospital. I was giving a radio interview and a television interview. 
This photograph was taken from the mosque in the big area of Nepal <coughs> in a school and uh, uh, we were giving the awareness program. We conducted the awareness program in that school. You can see me and uh, uh, left side, Mr. Brent Morgan. He is the international director of the Leprosy Mission. And I am so happy and I'm so happy to share you that last year, continuously two years, I got an opportunity to participate in the UN New World and represent the voice of people affected by leprosy. I never thought a person like me would have that access. Praise the Lord. And there was a big problem in the eastern part of Nepal that is called near Itahari. I think that Supa, you, you and your team uh, was also went there, uh, Itahari. The place was 20 kilometers away from Itahari. And uh, there was a big problem. Many people affected by leprosy, they faced a lot. Uh, and they faced the problems a lot. There was uh, uh, well, NLR used to work before, but later NLR stopped their, all the activities due to their own problems. Then after that, the people affected by leprosy, they used to uh, face a lot of problems because no hospitals was there. So I talked, I requested to Savakar, country director of the leprosy mission, and he initiated that and uh, started a satellite clinic there. And this was the starting meeting. Satellite in clinic means once a month, uh, a small team of the medical team from the leprosy mission, they visit to their place, only once a month. That also helped a lot. This is a photograph of advocacy and loving with curriculum development, both to include leprosy in the school curriculum. And the program was held, you can guess where? Another one. <laughs> Background, you can see the beautiful scene of the green scene of the leprosy mission, another one hospital, training unit at the top of the training unit. And all the principals, like uh, we invited uh, like more than 30, I think 35 principals were there from different schools and we conducted uh, the advocacy program there and because we are uh, what I think if one principal he is aware means he has access to 1000 mm. right and so the message spread very soon you can see the picture photo of the national poetry competition as I mentioned earlier the middle one is the Minister of Nepal. Peer counseling workshop which was held in Biratnagar. You can see Kasi in the middle. Relief materials distribution during earthquake and flood to the people affected by leprosy. We also celebrate all the day, but uh, Idea Nepal, we don't conduct uh, all the day. We join hands with the leprosy mission and jointly we celebrate with, with the leprosy mission. And we invite, on the March 11, we invite leprosy mission to join us. Let's fight for the rights of people affected by leprosy together. Thank you.